Hey guys, it's Emily here from Gale Force Twins. So my sister and I are going to put together a little Q&A video because it has been quite literally over a year since we had our first Q&A video and kind of started our YouTube channel. So basically, we asked you on Instagram and Facebook to send us questions and we are going to answer them and kind of give you a little bit of an update on our lives. A lot changes in a year. So we're just excited to kind of give you a little update video and answer your questions. Some of them are really awesome, so we're excited to answer them. For those of you that are new to our channel, we'll kind of give you a little bit of an update of everything that's been going on. And for those of you that have been following for a long time, thanks for following. So here's our little year later Q&A video um, to start. For those of you that don't know, we both have our captain's licenses and we run a charter boat out of Hillsborough Inlet. We do a lot of pelagic fishing, so targeting tuna, wahoo, mahi, kingfish. And we also do some bottom fishing from time to time because we both love bottom fishing. Um, I believe that kind of sums us up and who we are. We have our own charter boat business and we absolutely love the industry. Right? Exactly. And so it's basically been a whole year since, it might have even been over a year. Close to it. I think it's been over a year since our last Q&A video. So we're here. We're going to do another one. We asked you guys some questions on Facebook, Instagram, social media. Um, so we're going to find some questions and go ahead and answer them. When did you start fishing and when did you decide to become captains? So we started fishing as kids for fun, and we started seriously fishing in college for a job, and we decided to be captains on basically the first job that we had on the water. The captain was so encouraging about getting our captain's licenses, and not for a career necessarily, but just for yourself and an accomplishment. Yeah, and that he was like, you have the seat time, you already have the skills, you're smart, you're studious, you know how to study, you should really do this. And we basically, we had to finish up some seat time, and we did and we took the exam and haven't looked back since. What are the main species that you target? All right, I kind of already said that. I kind of already said it, but um, fishing out of Pompano Beach, one of the most common fish we catch is a kingfish. Yes, kingfish is the most prevalent species here, for sure. Kingfish provide action. Some people really like to eat them, some people don't, but it's just something that everybody likes to fish and catch. Wait, everybody likes to catch. And fish for yes, you know what I'm saying. Yes. Um, we also target a lot of tunas in the summertime, mahi mahi, um, sailfish. Basically, it's a very offshore fishery up here. We do do some reef fishing and bottom fishing, but the reef here is not like it is in the Keys. It's much smaller, so it's definitely not our main focus. I think that answers the question. All right, what's the next one? Okay, this is a really nice one. You two have come so far already. What are some future goals you plan to accomplish? All right. Future goals, all right. Um, for starters, we would just like to grow our business, definitely. Just in general, be more busy as a charter boat, that's a definite goal. Um, you go ahead. All right, I think <laughs> that definitely grow our charter business. We are still a new charter business. We finally finished our first year on our own. We're starting our second year right around now, so we want to continue to grow our business. Um, I think some future goals might include, I think we really want to try to get involved in a little bit more YouTube. Yeah, that's true. YouTube is very time consuming, but we do want to try to do more videos, so I think we're going to really make a serious effort on it this yes. time. Um, maybe do some fishing videos, we're kind of thinking more lifestyle videos, and even some travel. Yes, um, we love traveling. We love traveling, we really haven't had time for it. We do have a trip to Naples planned in a couple months. It's just going to be a short weekend trip and Naples is really close to us, it's, um, about an hour and a half away. And it's just the west coast of Florida so we might do some fishing over there and maybe a little travel there. So I, I personally would really like to do some more YouTube. I enjoy it and it's fun. Yeah. I don't know if that's a goal, but grow the business, however that, <laughs> however that happens. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> this is a funny yeah. one. Are you two always together? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point. 
I mean, um, <laughs> always is a strong always word. Always is a bit much, but we are together a large, a large, large time. time. Yeah. We don't do everything together. No. Uh, almost. Just about. Let's see. We live together. We work together. We work together. We do have the same friends. We have the same friends. We go to the gym together. Yeah. We go grocery shopping together. <laughs> I mean, from time to time, we will kind of do our own things on the weekends. You know? Like, we're not the kind of twins that, like, we have to be together. Yeah. It's just that way. It's just that's how it's worked out. Yeah. If this gives any insight, a f little fun fact, we actually were not in any of the same classes growing up. So when we were in elementary school all the way through high school, the only time we saw each other was in sports after school because we did the same sports. And then going to college, we picked the same major. So college was actually the first time that we were we roomed together. That was the first time we shared a room yeah, in college. Yeah, we shared a room in college. We actually shared a schedule because we picked the same major and we were in sports. So, so that was all the yeah. same. But then by our senior year of college at the University of Miami, um, we kind of intentionally took different classes. Yeah, because there was more flexibility. There was more flexibility by then. I took a computer science class, and you took. I took more psychology. More psychology classes, classes. Yeah. and then by our towards the end, um, I quit track early from an injury, and sh you kept doing track. Yeah. So you were traveling on your own to all the track meets, and I was alone at our apartment in college. So no, we're not always together. Yeah, um, we do enjoy to be together, but it's also healthy to do stuff separately. Yeah. Do you ever plan on venturing to the near shore slash inshore? style of fishing um for fun absolutely yes when it comes to our fun fishing i will do anything i'll go ice fishing i'll go marlin fishing in hawaii i'll go tarpon fishing in short i, I could care less anything for chartering i don't really think so i actually really enjoy um pelagic fishing for a charter boat perspective well also we run a 32 intrepid so that would be tough to bring right. inshore and once you add inshore to the dynamic a smaller boat and it's a whole right. other step. But I will caveat, if we get large enough to where we can run two boats, we can each run a boat, perhaps we would add another type of fishing. You never know. You never know. The future is wide and open. I would also <laughs> add that not just um, inshore, but we do have a lot of kids on our charters and mm -hmm. sometimes if kids start to feel seasick offshore, we're very quick to say, no, we're not going to do this. I don't want you to have a bad day. We're going to come into the intercoastal and fish the intercoastal. So I guess that would be kind of inshore fishing for us. Yeah. And we fish for barracudas and jacks, and we do our best to put the kids on some fish. What is your favorite species to target? We get this question a lot. Yeah. You go first. Um, I don't know about species specifically, but I... <laughs> It really depends, like if I'm the one that's taking people out to do it or if I'm personally going to catch it. I really, really enjoy bottom fishing. I enjoy reef fishing and just targeting um, mutton snappers, yellowtail snappers, groupers. I think that's personally something that I really enjoy, but that's not to say that um, targeting billfish isn't up there with the bottom fish. <laughs> yeah, see this is a tough one for me because I really like bottom fishing too, but honestly the first fish that comes to my mind is sailfish. Yeah. I don't know why. I love it. I love kite fishing. It is a huge process to get the kite up, break the baits, and do it all, but it's just something that I've always really liked, especially when you're doing it in a tournament with a team of people and you've yeah. got, you know, two kites up and you have everybody's got all hands on deck and it's just I think the whole Maybe my favorite species to target is sailfish in a tournament. So when, very you have, when you have the whole the whole operation going. Yeah. I really like that. Well, okay, this isn't a question, but they said you should do how to videos on knots, especially ones connecting different lines. We've talked about it. We've talked we've done I think we we've, done, have like, done, we've done the more. the uni and we've done the double uni. And the double uni is line to line knot. That is a YouTube video on our channel. Um we haven't done too much of it, not for any particular reason, other than the fact that do people really care to watch? How, oh, Yay. this is Rover, guys. Hi, this is our cutie named Rover. I don't know if he's in the frame, so we're gonna pull him over. <laughs> he was our rescue when we were in college in Louisiana, and he's very cuddly and he's he likes. To he's one us. of those cats that when you say the cat adopted you, Rover adopted us for sure, for sure. Oh, I guess to um, finish the how-to question, just, um, I guess we thought about it, it's just not something we really put time into. So if you guys really want to see it, let, let us know. Let us know. Do you ever fish tournaments? Yes, definitely. Um, tournament fishing is kind of one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. 
I don't know why, just, I think because we're really competitive and we ran college track and then leaving the college track scene um, to doing the whole tournament thing, it's just, tournament fishing just kind of takes me back to remembering um, being competitive, being an athlete. Yeah. Who is the outgoing twin? Who would you say the outgoing twin is? I feel like this is always a trick question. Um, I think when you first get to know us, I am the outgoing twin. Yeah. People, are, I think I'm more talkative and more open, but down the line, once you know both of us, I feel like you're the more outgoing twin. Yeah, it depends how you use the word outgoing. It does. It's and very I feel situational. Like, I feel like we're comparing apples to apples. It's not like, oh, you're the outgoing twin and you're the not the outgoing. shy twin, because yeah. that's not true at all. But you're right, it's very situational. I don't know. I don't know if that's your question. <laughs> <laughs> what are the top two to three things you've learned since you decided to set up your business on your own rather than the way you started? It's raining outside right now, so I hope you guys can't hear that and it gets all fuzzy. <laughs> I don't think it will. I don't think okay. it will. So rather than the way you started on your own. So for those of you that are new here, I will give you a little bit of history on how we got started on our yes. own. Growing up, we were both really fishing kids and boating kids and just loved it all. And when we were in college, we took a job on a sport fish for fun. It was supposed to be a fun summer thing just to change things up. And one thing led to another. That job really just kind of catapulted us. Yeah. Um, we enjoyed it so much, we kind of went from job to job, we got our captain's licenses, graduated college, and decided to stay in the industry. Basically, we said yes to everything. It was like, do you want to do this? Yes. Oh, here's this opportunity here. I'm yes. going. It was just, we didn't say no, and we just kind of kept taking opportunity after opportunity. There's actually a YouTube video from Mike Rowe, yes. and it talks about following your passion is a lie. Yes. to like basically how in America everyone's like, follow your passion, follow your passion. And my girl goes on to say that that's really kind of a big lie. Following your passion isn't exactly what you should do because you really need to make money. <laughs> and his big message was follow opportunity. And usually there's a place where your passion opportunity can meet, but at the end of the day, um, you know, you can still have a passion and a hobby, but you really have to follow opportunity. And I like to say that I don't really feel like either of us, were, we were following our passions doing yeah. this whole fishing thing. It was just opportunity. It was just opportunity. And it happened to, of course, interlock with the fact that we are very passionate about, passionate about what we do. But we were following opportunity. So I guess after several jobs on the water, um, being mates, deckhands, and, um, captains. and captains, captains for hire, for other charter boats and charter companies, we finally decided we wanted to go up on our own and be our own boss. So to get to that question, what are the top two to three things you've learned since you decided to set up your own business? All right. Um, all right. Well, I guess something that I always knew this going into it, but maybe didn't realize how like in your face it would be was yeah, I know the what you're say. 24 hour around the clock oh, grind. That says something else. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. All right. Um, I say that because kind of like I touched on earlier, it was just doing charter fishing all of a sudden. There's so many things that have to line up, paperwork and bookings and it's not just wake up, go to the boat, fish, go home. Right, no. And I knew not. that going into it, it wasn't going to be just that, but um, it's definitely something that it's an all the time thing. I guess, you know, when you're the boss, everything stops at you. Every problem that comes up. Yeah, there's no one, oh, problem. go talk to so-and-so about everything. it. No, but it's, it's your problem. It's, it's your every problem. problem. It's yours. Um, is well, that what, your answer? Th that's okay. one of them. One thing that I think I've learned and I know you will agree with is that working with family, especially your twin sister, it was not as smooth sailing as I thought it was going to be. Um, we we love each other very deeply. I don't. I'm sure that comes across to you guys. And we thought that being business partners was going to be so easy because we, we're twins. We're twins. We, we get, get along. along. We're best friends. Yeah. But dang, it was not. So <laughs> so basically, there's these micro differences in our personalities and who we are. And when you work together, those become amplified. So we both had the same goal, but we had different ways mentally. Different visions of how we were going to get this goal. So we've had to learn that communication is extremely important. Believe it or not, we, even though we're twins and everything, and we talk all the time, we literally sit down weekly and we have meetings. And we talk about what we have to get done and what's going on in our heads and where our minds are at. Yeah, it was definitely a big... Um, maybe that was a big shock to us. Every issue that we might have had in the beginning that was just like whatever, we're sisters. Not that we ever really had issues. Issues, but it just gets all of a sudden you're working together, it's like, 
you're, you're spending so much time with the other person that I think we have to learn how to communicate with each other. And I think something that we could work on even now is every time you work for a boss, at the end of the day, at the end of a charter, you know, your boss, your captain will say to you, oh, you did a great job today. I mean, hopefully they're saying that to you. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we went from working for captains that were like, nice job today, to working for each other. And I think we forgot to tell each other, nice job today. Yeah. Or, oh, true. you did a good job gaffing that fish. Or you did a great job finding the fish or putting us on the fish. Right. Or even if it was a bad day, like, it's okay. It's okay. It happens. It happens. I think we could do better at that with each other. I agree. Okay. I don't have a fishing question, but I would like to know if y'all was seeing Baby Shark again. Oh, man. So for those right, of you we'll tell you about this yes. one. So we did a podcast with Dennis Friel, and he has a YouTube channel. It's Dennis Friel Connected by Water. And every podcast he does, you have to start the podcast doing something funny or joking. So the last one we did is we literally sang Baby Shark. Well, because most of the people when they do this, they like joke around and they make fun of Dennis or they joke, but we're kind of serious people. Or we we just have a hard time like, like uh, we're not like witty funny joking people. So we're like, well, let's just sing Baby Shark. So we had Baby Shark cereal and we sang Baby Shark. If you want to see it again, go watch it. It'll be in the description box. We'll put the link for the video. Yeah, <laughs> but we could do them the honors. We'll do a short version. Okay, ready? Baby shark do 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 do. Baby shark do 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 do. Baby shark do 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 do. Baby shark. That's all they get. Okay. <laughs> Fishing for pelagics out of Pompano, which technique is your favorite? Kite, planer, drifting? Um, I don't like drifting. Yeah, I think I prefer planer fishing. Uh, at least this time of year in the winter when the fish are close, I would definitely planer fish. I like planer fishing because you can cover a lot of ground fast. Yeah, I agree. Um, I enjoy kite fishing, but you have to have the right weather, you have to have the right wind. And usually on a charter, if it's windy enough to put kites up, people get seasick and when you kite fish you're kind of sitting and not moving around so that kind of promotes seasickness yeah, I would I say agree. sometimes so planer fishing. What boat are you currently running and are you planning on changing up anytime soon? Ooh. We are currently running a 32 Intrepid like 2005 yes out of Hillsborough Inlet and like I said guys we are a new business and we are just taking one step okay. after another but no we don't have plans to change up our boat anytime soon no 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 but if an opportunity came along for a new boat or something, I don't think we'd say no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are, like you said, open to just about anything. We hope we answered everybody's question. If you guys have any more fun ones, you can post them in the comments and we'll be happy to answer them. We thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more.